All right, nieces and nephews, welcome back to the congregation. Uh, I've got some new toys that uh, we're gonna show off a little bit in this video. Uh, we got the uh, banana hammock up on a lift, I'm gonna show you that. There were a couple comments in one of the last videos where I was going through a bunch of things and uh, you know, fixed the oil tank and uh, did some stuff with the axle and the torques, etc. cetera. And uh, they took issue that I called this bike a disaster when clearly it wasn't. Well, I just wanna let you guys in on a little secret. I've not ridden this thing really, but three times, four times total uh, since I got it because there's a lot of little things that I'm having to work through. After I rebuilt the carburetor a couple videos ago, uh, I took it out for the test ride and uh, that's also when I had replaced the oil pressure switch and I was ecstatic that I had a, uh, an oil pressure light and uh, that light never really went off. It went off at high RPMs when the engine was cold and then eventually it just stopped stopped turning off altogether. And by the time I got it back, uh, the top end's pretty clattery, so I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. We got some troubleshooting steps I'm gonna take you through uh, that I got from Shelby. So we're gonna learn here uh, relatively shortly if these troubleshooting steps are going to fix the problem or if I'm gonna have to dive in a lot deeper. So with that, let's get started on this pig. Before we dig in, uh, let's show off a little bit uh, some of the toys we got. Uh, I did finally cave and get this Harbor Freight lift. There it is with the pin in. We're gonna be working around the uh, oil pump today. I did push this thing a little bit farther forward than I probably should have. I think it's gonna be all right. This little stool, uh, because it gets super hot in here. I've got this little shop fan. Hopefully it's not too loud in the background. So when I got back from, uh, from the ride after troubleshooting, I developed a pretty significant oil leak uh, under here. I don't know where it's coming from. You know, after I fixed the oil tank and did all the preventative maintenance, I had pretty much gotten rid of every single leak on this thing. So to me, there's clearly some kind of pressure somewhere in the oil system and it's not getting out. I don't know what to do. I did buy this oil gauge. I did put it in the tappet screen hole instead of in the pressure switch hole. I honestly think I'd, I'd, I'd like it better there. When I talked to Shelby about it, he said to remove this pressure switch get a 1 8 NPT male to female adapter, and then move this uh, over there. And we're gonna try to bleed it, is what we're gonna try to do. He said to put it in there, back it off a little bit, take the spark plugs out, start cranking it, and uh, see if oil starts coming out. He said the gauge will probably start working, and then, uh, then we'll know if we actually have oil running through there or not. I'm honestly not that hopeful. I mean, I'd like, he knows what he's doing, obviously. Shelby is a master technician, been doing this a hell of a long time. And uh, when I started talking about other steps, he's like, no, no, do this first, um, as if he'd seen this before. So I'm, I'm really hoping, because if not, now I gotta get in and uh, start taking apart this oil pump. I've watched a lot of videos uh, on that since I talked to Shelby last, and it sounds like in order to do that effectively, then you know I'm gonna have to do things like open up this you know, cam chest and, and maybe take out the, the pinion gear and the worm gear uh, to get everything apart. And uh, while I'm not afraid of doing it, I just want to ride this bike, man. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I probably have the right size wrench for this, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and put that uh, tappet screen. Oh, I got to take the whole thing off first. All right. I think the next purchase inside my little uh, makeshift garage is going to be a, a better toolbox that has a work station on top of it. We're gonna get, I'm determined we're gonna get this thing off, right? I bet if I had the right wrenches, it would make it a little bit easier. Okay, yeah, this ain't even wet. So when I had it going the other day, there was no oil passing through this cage. Uh, since I'm not gonna use that pressure gauge on that hole, I'll just turn my fan off because we're getting ready to go pick up for Jeep. Harleys use a lot of these 111.05 O-rings and uh, found a whole bag of them on Amazon. They're orange, but whatever. I think I paid like six bucks for a bag of 50 of them. Pretty much everything on this bike uses that. Uh, I'm not using the correct tool here, but I've learned in my few weeks of having this bike that um, really, if you just, if you don't gorilla torque it, yeah, you're gonna booger this up a little bit, but not as bad. Basically, I wanna make sure this is on before we take off. And this gives me room, taking that gauge out of this hole to work on this pressure switch, because I'm gonna tell you what, man, it is not easy to get to. So apparently you're supposed to be real careful taking this little guy off here. It's a little 3 8 nut. A little washer. I've dropped that little washer more than I care to admit. 
We're gonna put this little nut back on here for storage. I've got the outsides of this pressure switch pretty marred up. Uh, I can't get a wrench in there. There might be a special tool available for it, but I'll, I don't know what that tool is. Um, either way, I can't get anything in there. So we've been having to muscle it with this crest or this, uh, not crescent wrench, channel locks. And as soon as I get this out far enough, we'll just do it by hand. I'm not gonna take too awful long. This is the s, s brand switch. Stupid me thought that if I had, oh, did I mar up the threads in there? Let's see. Nope, it goes in there just fine. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna pipe dope the end of that. Just a hair. I've got the bigger kind that you can um, brush on, but uh, this allows me to be a little more precise, I think. I don't really want a whole lot on there. Just a hair more. There you go. Start threading this bad boy in there. Okay, we're gonna put this 45 in here. I already put pipe dope off camera. Uh-oh, get in there. Yeah, we don't like that. It's cross threading right out of the fucking gate. Come on now. Hey, we had a little bit of a pause. Bowman went and got me this 45. This, um, I already had a 45, but I think because of the chrome plating on there, the thread didn't quite fit. And uh, I wasn't gonna force it. A little more of this uh, pipe dope. No, it's not going in any farther than the other one. How about that? I wonder if I can find a wrench that's more in line with that size. Five eighths is too big. I believe we determined that a half inch was too small. Nope, half inch is it. All right, this, this is better than trying to get that adjustable wrench in there. I think we about got it. All right, that's where I want that. Now, I, this gauge still has a lot of fucking pipe dope on it. Really need that off of there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush on this thing for a little bit, see if I can't get some more of that off of there. I don't like that at all, Pam. I'll see you in a minute. All right, well, we're gonna leave some of that on there. I might have to back that out a little bit. All right, so I don't want this in yet. We're gonna back this one out just a hair, the one I just tightened up so much. That's gonna be the right angle there. Okay, so apparently I had the camera off and I'm gonna reference a piece of the video here that you're never gonna see. Uh, I tried to turn the bike over with the spark plugs out and just let it run uh, according to Shelby. If I would have done that, oil should have been coming out of that hole to try to bleed the air out of the system. Now I do reference taking the cam chest breather tube off and that seemed to work. I don't know what made me pull that off, but it did work. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, I'm gonna call Shelby and uh, we're gonna find out, did I let it crank long enough? Do I need to let it go longer? But as you saw, we had uh, no oil pressure on the gauge. I think you saw that. I'll try to edit that in. And uh, even when I took the gauge out, no oil pressure whatsoever. So we gotta figure this thing out. I'll make a phone call to him and then uh, we'll see when I get back from that. All right, just got off the phone with uh, Shelby and uh, talked him through what I was going through. And uh, he said, yeah, you definitely should have oil coming out of there. So, yeah. Hey, hey, for those of you guys who are making fun of me for calling this thing a disaster a couple videos ago, I hope you're happy now because it actually is one. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't have parts to fix, but I can at least start getting into here. I think at least for right now, I don't know, we're gonna, I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna take the exhaust off. I'm going to uh, take my right side controls off uh, in preparation of, uh, of uh, trying to get more into this oil pump problem. Hell, for all I know, it could be an oil line. You know what I mean? So. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to film getting into the exhaust uh, or getting the exhaust off and the, and, the, and the controls off. That's kind of mundane stuff. I think a lot of people can do that. But uh, if I do start getting into the cam cover today, then uh, we'll start recording that. But yeah, we'll see in a little bit. Shelby told me to start it with no exhaust on it. Uh, I, I did get some oil coming out of here. And, uh, we're going to see. He says there might be flames, so this might be it for your old uncle. Ready? Okay, take two. Uh, we think we might have figured out something. Let's see. All right, so a little bit of an update, kind of. Uh, I'm actually now more lost than I was earlier when I put the camera down. So I've been on the phone uh, with Shelby back and forth most of the day. 
And uh, let, let me show you a little bit about what's going on. Hopefully the lighting is okay for you. I'm gonna try to get in there. Maybe with a flashlight, we'll do that. All right, so there's a barb right there that uh, was supposed to be the cam chest breather. And uh, just on a whim, I decided to take the hose off because the hose is this, here, it, it, this is it's supposed to be a, like a reinforced hose and it's not. And I, I started getting oil flow out of it uh, by taking that off. And um, so I put the, the, the pressure gauge back on there and I was getting about 16 PSI. I'm sending pictures to Shelby and now he's saying that this hose that's on top, on top of the transmission cover here, there's two barbs. He says that that shouldn't be there. He said that should be the breather, but that's the one that's going to the filter. And I, I'm gonna have to do some, you know, YouTube University research here, but, um, you know, obviously Shelby's a master me mechanic and you know, whatnot, but there's only one barb coming out of the oil tank and that feeds into the pump here and then outside of the pump goes into the filter, but there's no other way for the oil to get back. So I'm thinking that this is right that that tube goes into the top of the transmission cover and there's a channel in there that allows it to go back into the oil tank. Maybe that sounds ridiculous, but I know that Harley does use channels like that because on the bottom where the oil tank is, there is a channel uh, that allows the, um, when you fill up the transmission fluid, it allows it to go into the transmission only and not into the oil tank. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm trying to make sense of it, but uh, so now I got to make sure somehow that these oil lines are correct or routed correctly or whatever. It may not be a problem with the oil pump at all. It may be. I don't know. All I know is that when I take the tube off, it goes onto that nipple. I got oil pressure. When I put the oil, when I put that tube back on, no oil pressure. So I got to figure this thing the hell out. Yeah, I did get the exhaust off and the um, foot controls on the right side off um, in anticipation of taking apart the oil pump and the cam cover. But, uh, you know, then I ran into this little revelation and now it's got me kind of paused in my tracks here. So I'm going to research that and then, you know, we'll get back to you. All right, y'all, that's going to uh, to wrap this one up. I haven't done an outro at the editing desk in a while. Uh, I referenced talking to Shelby several times in the video, but um, after the oil line routing disagreement, I did, uh, I did talk to Pedro, uh, the wanderer, Portugal wanderer on Instagram. Uh, he's also a highly respected and trusted person to, to reach out to on, uh, on motorcycle questions. And... Um, problem with this thing is uh, like there's a lot of videos and forum posts and stuff out there about soft tails and their oil line routing but not really anything on dynas but i did confirm through one forum post that i found and from talking to um pedro that uh yes the on dynas the, the return oil line does go into that second barb on top of the transmission cover so we got some more work to do i've got some uh, tools on the way i've got some gaskets on the way I need to order an oil pump. Uh, that's another expense that I wasn't really wanting to do, but I'm going to order the oil pump and uh, and fingers crossed I don't have to tear into the motor some and do a rebuild on it because I've never done that. I would be kind of excited to do that for the first time, but uh, not excited for the expense that that would uh, create for the old Uncle Bogator. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming along on this video and all videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.